Vern Tripp wrote a song, and I know if you've been watching TBN, you that, be, you that can get it, you've heard it. It says, we've got the power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We do. Let's sing about it right now. Let's go. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. something from St. Luke's Gospel and also from the book of Acts. We're going to have church tonight. And if you don't mind, I think I'll just get comfortable. Thank you, brother. I'm reading from the first chapter of Luke, if you have your Bible. From verse 26, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. For behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name 
Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Say it out loud. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. There's power in that name. Verse 32, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. I believe I could stop right there and have church. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? Now, if you will, I would like you to turn over to the third chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 3. This is after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And his ascension into heaven where he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. And told those 120 disciples to go to Jerusalem. And wait to be endued with power from on high. Holy Ghost power. And this third chapter I would like to encourage you to read the entire chapter. Because this is one of the most beautiful miracles that you will find in the book of Acts. Verse number 6 says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And I want to preach to you about the name of Jesus. I love the name of Jesus. Every one of you that are watching by television, every one of you that are under this gospel tent, the entire world, people are influenced by names. I mean, names reflect prestige. Names reflect power. And names reflect perfection. Some of you women wouldn't buy a product unless it had a certain name attached to it. And I'm not here to glorify any name brands 
There's only one name I want to lift up on this telecast, and that's the name of Jesus. Can you shout amen with me? But people's lives are influenced by names. Some people won't wear a pair of shoes unless it's a certain name. A tie unless it's a certain name. A shirt. Oh, I don't wear that kind. A brand name. And lives are influenced by name. Even in the political specter, there are names that carry weight. And I'm not here for any politician. But I want you to know the greatest name that there ever has been or ever will be has been debased by the entire world. They take it upon their lips in the form of curses and yet we heal the sick in that name. We cast out devils in that name. We bring deliverance in that name. People are converted in that name and we're going to to get out of the grave in that name. What is that name? Say the name again. Jesus is that name. Satan is commanded to respect that name. This is the badge of the believer. How many believers do I have here? Throw your hand up. I want them to catch this on television. All of these hands that are raised are believers. And do you know what God says about you believers? Put your hand down. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Oh, I'm beginning to feel this thing now. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name if they eat or drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. In my name they shall take up serpents. And in my name they, the believer, shall lay hands on the sick and they shall shall recover the name is above every name the name of Jesus every knee has to bow every tongue must confess that he is Lord Woo. now I guess you folks can tell this is no fireside chat. God didn't call me to talk. He called me to preach. And I come here to lift up that name. He said wherever two or three are gathered together in that name, there am I in the midst of them. I come to tell you, Jesus is here. He's here under this tent. Walking up and down these aisles, in and out of these chairs. He's there in that living room where you are. He's in your bedroom. Every one of you that are watching this, Jesus is there. And he's there to save you. He's there to heal you. And he's there to set you free. Hallelujah. There's power in that name. In that fourth chapter of Acts. Verse number 12, it says, There is no other name under heaven given to man whereby we must be saved. Hear me, world, I'm talking to you now. Jesus is the only one that demands worship from every human being. He is the only way. Now, either Jesus was a fanatic or an escapee from a mental hospital, or he was God. Buddha came on the scene and said, I had a vision. 
Muhammad come along and said, I have a dream. But along come Jesus. And he said, everybody that came before me is a thief and a liar. He said, I didn't have a dream and I didn't have a vision. But I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only name. You're not saved in the name of a man. You're not saved in the name of a church. There's no church that can save your soul. There's not a bishop with his collar on that can save you. The only one that can save your soul is Jesus Christ. He died for you on Calvary. Can you shout praise the Lord somebody? Jesus. What is his name? get beside myself I love that name I said I love that name I don't mind telling you my wife and I were going down the freeways of California some years ago and my foot got heavy don't you folks here in this city look at me cross-eyed you got a bunch of lead foots around here too when you're out there on that highway you gotta follow that traffic and I was speeding. I don't mind telling you. I'm going to confess it publicly. I was speeding. And before long, I saw that flashing blue light in my rear view mirror. And isn't it amazing? The first thing you do, your foot comes off the accelerator. No matter whether you're speeding or not, it just automatically comes off of that thing. I pulled over to the side and I said to my wife, uh-oh, he caught us. I got out of the car. I don't like to be at no disadvantage. And he was a little fella. And he come a cussing. Started using the name of Jesus in vain. And I felt my fist doubling up. I don't like to confess this on television. But I wanted to build him one. I don't like people cussing about the name of Jesus. I use that name to heal the sick. I use that name to open blind eyes. I use that name to cast out devils. And here he is using it in the form of a curse. And when he got close enough, I wanted to let him have it. But something come all over me. And instead, my fist opened up into a limp hand. And instead of belting him one, I laid hands on him. Oh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. You know what I found myself doing? I said, Lord, bless this highway patrolman. I said, forgive him for taking your name in vain. He ain't got no sense, Lord. He didn't mean it. My God, don't send him to hell for using your name in vain. Wash him in the blood of Jesus and write his name in the Lamb's book of life. Woo. You know, I felt so good praying for the man. And when I got done praying, did you ever see a trooper shaking in his boots? I looked at him and I said, sir, give me the ticket now. I said, I, I, I'm sorry, but I just had to pray for you. I don't like folks using the name of Jesus. You say, I'm a perpetrator of that name. I heal the sick. I bring people to Jesus. I love Jesus. He died for me, lifted me up out of sin. And I testified to him what God did in my life. But I said, sir, I am guilty. I am guilty. I was speeding. Give me the ticket. He looked at me and said, no, sir. I'm not giving you no ticket. You go ahead. The highway is yours, sir. Help yourself. <laughs> oh, I tried to argue with him. I said, no, sir, I'm guilty. Now, I deserve that ticket. You give that thing to me. He said, no, sir, Reverend. He said, I ain't giving you no ticket. He said, the highway is yours. Just pray for me. I said, I'm sure not going to do that. But I said, don't you use that name in vain anymore. I love the name of Jesus. Everybody, shout me that name again. Ooh, do I like
like to hear that. Now it's the only name that can save your soul. But it's not only a name that can save your soul and record your name in the Lamb's book of life. That's the greatest miracle. But I want you to know it is a delivering name. And verse number 6 of that third chapter of the book of Acts, I read it to you earlier. Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now let me go back and sort of tell you this story because it's a beautiful story. Here's a man who was 40 years a cripple. Just like this thing I got laying up here on this platform. There's a young man in my audience, 27 years a cripple. 27 years. Cerebral palsy. I'd hate to carry that thing around all day. A triple brace. Cerebral palsy. Defective lungs. Defective kidneys. Defective heart. Only three chambers of a heart functioning properly. Blind in his eyes. He was a spastic. Doctors declared he would never be normal. But I want you to know in a split moment of time, God performed a miracle in this young man's body. And for 14 years, he has been healed. Stand up, Ralph. Let him see how you can stand. Run across the front here. Ralph, start running across the front. I want him to show, show him how you can run. Turn around and come back. I'm talking about a God that can save and a God that can heal. Isn't that beautiful? You say, preacher, who did that? Talk to me. Who did it? I can't hear you. It is a delivering name. Now, you know, it's wonderful to read about it in the scriptures, but it's more wonderful to see it take place right here under this tent. Right there in your home, you that are sick and diseased and afflicted. You may be crippled. You may be all tied up with arthritis and rheumatism. But I bring good news to you. Jesus is the answer to your problem. Medical science may have given you up. But Jesus is the answer. And he will do what no other power can do. This man for 40 years was laid at the gate called Beautiful. Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. A man who never walked. For 40 long years, they placed him right there at that gate. Hear me. Jesus all possibility walked by that man and never touched him. Jesus always went to that synagogue as his custom was. But I kind of believe he saved him for his church to heal. Are you listening to me? After Jesus sent him to Jerusalem so that they could receive the same anointing that he had, he said, from now on, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. And they all got the Holy Ghost. And this is right after Pentecost. Peter and John was going into the temple at the hour of prayer. And I can see them two walking right on by that man. Here he was with a little bowl uh, seeking for a little offering, alms for the poor, alms for the cripple. And Peter and John walked right on by and ignored that man. May I stop right here and say, that's the condition that the church is in today. Now I know you don't like to hear this, but I'm going to preach it anyway. The only vehicle of expression that God has is His church. 
And if that world's going to be healed out there, it's going to be healed through His church. Can you shout amen, somebody? And if you are saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are part of that church. And you are the vehicle that God is using to bring deliverance to people that are in need. The church is passing up the sick and the diseased and the afflicted. Oh, not all the churches. I'm talking in general terms right now. But here's two men walking by right after the Holy Ghost descended and came upon them. And all of a sudden I can picture John stopping Peter and saying, Hold it, Pete. Wait a minute. What is this thing we got a hold of the other day? Oh, Holy Ghost, brother. See, God didn't give you that Holy Ghost just to give you a spasm every once in a while. But God gave you that Holy Ghost to put the thing to work. Why? He said, didn't Jesus say the works he did we supposed to do? He said, he did say that. Well, how come we passed him up then? Let's go back and lay five on the man. He wants money, but let us give him what he ain't looking for. And they walk back to the man. Now, if you was that man begging for alms and two fellas passed you and then come back, don't you think your expectations would be high also? Holding that cup up saying, alms for the people? Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Oh, I don't have what you want, but I have what you need. I like this. I have what you need. Hear me, world out there. You may not want what I have, but I have what you need. You may be laughing when you hear a man of God preach, but we've got what you need. Peter looked at that man and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto you. Hear me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now hear me. This is not a magical name. You don't use this name like a magician comes before you and says, Abracadabra. That is sleight of hand. There's a lot of people that use that name, but people are still sick. But when you have the authority from God to use that name, you are standing in His character. You are standing in His stead. You have been called by God. You have been chosen by God. I'm not on this television program to talk to you about God. I'm here to talk for God. I come to tell you God is real. And the name of Jesus Christ can deliver you and set you free from all sickness and disease and infirmity. If you believe that, shout amen. Ah, let me prove it to you. That man didn't get up. He didn't get up right away when he said, In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That man looked at them too and said, What are you, crazy? My mama been putting me here for 40 years. You think I'd be in this position if I could walk? Peter said, I didn't come to talk dialogue with you, man. And he reached down and got him by the hand. And he said, I said, In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And the moment he took him by the hand, what Peter had in him was transferred into him. I believe in transferred power, don't you? That's why God told us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I come to tell you, I have something in my hand. I've had preachers come to me and say, I don't have anything in my hand. Then don't put them on me. Something in my hand, I've got something in my feet, I've got something in me, I got it in my head, I got it in my heart, I got it all over me. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me, and He's given me power to use that name. Can you 
just shout amen. Oh, you know, many of us, we like to be so precise and exact. Have our robe on so beautifully. Father, in our ecclesiastical tones, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I read a story about Smith Wigglesworth, one of the great apostles of faith, went into a man's dying room with tuberculosis. Medical science gave him up to die, and all he did was say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Over and over again, proclaiming the name of Jesus. Didn't even lay hands on the man. But all of a sudden, the power of God came on him. Tuberculosis came out of those lungs. God gave him two brand new lungs and healed him. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. You don't realize what you've got? How many of you have the Holy Ghost? Look at all them hands. You misunderstood me. Let, let me sort of uh, bring it down to earth. And I want my television audience to hear this. How many of you talk in tongues? Well, you'll never have any doubt that I'm a tongue-talking preacher. And I'm not ashamed to let you know I am fire baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I've got authority to use the name of Jesus to bring deliverance to the captain. Shout yes! Hallelujah! I'm talking about a God that is live. And I want you to know Jesus is in the house tonight. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me? Jesus! Let me hear you say his name again. Oh, hallelujah. Let me read verse 12 to you. Peter reached down and got him by the hand. Something supernatural happened. It says immediately his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood leaping and shouting and praising God and ran into the temple and broke up a prayer meeting. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see a Holy Ghost revival come to America and break up all those prayer meetings in the church that every sick person on wheelchairs, every sick person on crutches and canes, every blind eye will be open. This is what the church is for. So the sick can come and be healed. Can you shout amen, somebody? This lame man which was healed held Peter and John. All the people ran together to them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering in the 11th verse. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. Oh, I could preach an hour on this. Don't you look to man. Don't you give obeisance to any man. You don't worship any man. You worship God. He's the only one. Can you shout amen? These people come running to Peter and he picked them up off of their knees and said, Oh, don't you look on us as if by our own holiness we made this man to walk. Listen. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus whom you delivered up and you denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You denied the Holy One of 
the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you. You killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised up from the dead whereof we are witnesses. Here it is. And His name through faith in His name hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I come to tell you there's power in that name to heal the sick. Power to cast out devils. Devils are real, but so is the power of God. And I didn't come here to advertise devils. I come here to advertise Jesus. I have power over every evil spirit that has you in bondage. And in the name of Jesus, I can set you free. If you're bound with drug addiction, I can set you free. If you're bound by alcohol, I can set you free. If you're bound with perverted sex, I can set you free. If you are bound by sex outside of marriage, I can set you free from adultery and a fornication. Every unclean spirit, God has given His church power over all the power of the devil. Can you shout amen with me somebody? I want you to turn to the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. Verse number 16, 16, 16. It came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Let me tell you what it is. It's a fortune telling demon. And don't turn the TV set off. I said it's a fortune telling demon which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Do you know that witchcraft devil can get religious? Did you know that fortune-telling demon will quote scripture? Are you listening to me? Paul had enough of it. Verse 18 said, And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Hear it. And he came out the same hour. There's power in the name of Jesus. I said there's power in the name of Jesus. And God has given us authority to use that name. He said to his disciples, hitherto you've asked the Father nothing in my name. Why? Because he was with them. But he said from now on, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. There's power in that name. You have access to the throne of God. The only way you can get into the presence of Almighty God is to say, Father, in Jesus' name. And when you say that you are in the throne room, you can ask what you will, and God will give you the desire of your heart because Jesus said so. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? What do you have need of tonight under this tent? What do you need that's watching this by television? Whatever you need is, whatever your need is, I'll hold in my hand the key to your miracle. And that key is the name of Jesus. I said the name of Jesus. It'll set the captive free. Whatever your need is tonight or today, whatever time you're viewing this, I can pray a prayer and God will set you free. If you're sick, if you're diseased, if you're afflicted, I love to use that name. 
and I know this audience would want to pray with me and I want to pray for you everybody raise your right hand if you will please gracious father I pray for everyone that's viewing this telecast today Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose every sinner, every drug addict, every alcoholic, every perverted spirit. Satan, I command you, loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. You can't have a one of them. Those that are crippled, sick, diseased, and afflicted. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. By the faith of the living God, I call it done. In Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, Amen. Everybody under this tent, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Remember what I said? My first point was it's a saving name. There is no other man, name given to man under heaven whereby we must be saved than the name of Jesus. If you're here tonight, you can have your name on every church book and still go to hell. You must be born again. I've come with good news. Jesus paid for your He paid for your sins 2,000 years ago. He died 2,000 years ago. He bought the whole field to get a treasure out of it. I want every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl that don't know Jesus, but you'd like to know him tonight. I'm going to ask you to come out of your seat before everybody watching this telecast and this host of people under this tent tonight. I want every head bowed, every eye closed in prayer. God's going to perform a miracle in your life right now. Satan, you can't have a one of them. Every young person. Those that are tired of sin. Young people, God's looking for young men and young women that's not afraid. I mean not afraid to face the devil. If you're a sissy, forget it. Go serve the devil. God's looking for men and women who's not afraid to fight. You're going to eyeball the devil. I want every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl that would like to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, stand to your feet right where you are. I'm going to pray for you. All over this place. That's it. Thank you, young folks. It takes a real man and a real woman to do what I'm asking you to do. All over this tent. In the back. All over. That's it. Thank you so much. Now while you stand there and every head is bowed, I'm going to ask you to get out into that aisle and come down here and stand with me. Before everybody on television, don't sit down. Jesus said, if you'll be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Sing the song, Bill, while they come, will you? Come on, all of you, all you that are standing. Just let this crowd know you're not ashamed of Jesus. God bless you, son. There's life in Jesus' name. There's cleansing, there's healing in Jesus' name. just for a moment you young folks you don't know how you thrill me I had a young girl in my church in Chicago a young black girl 16 years of age 
my kind of girl. The Supreme Court issued a ruling and said no Bible reading in school. Not one church, not one church fought it. That 16 year old girl took her Bible to school the next morning. South side of Chicago, Dusabo, big school, I preached there. I know that school. It was right in the middle of the drug craze. About 2,700, 3,500 students, and all them teachers on the platform, she walked up that rostrum. Not one teacher said a word to her, 16 years of age, walks out to that rostrum. And she says, the Supreme Court of the United States says, I cannot read my Bible in school. She said, the devil's a liar. She said, I'm going to read from Matthew's gospel. And she read a whole chapter. 16 years old. Some of them dudes were on drugs. And they were glassy-eyed. They looked at her and said, hey, man, what's she on? I'd like to have some of what she got. They arrested her front page of the paper left her out on bail next day went to school again this time the press was there they knew that girl they had faith in her she ain't giving up she comes back the next day full body assembly teachers on the platform walked up that ramp walked out she said the supreme court says i can't read my bible in school devil's still a liar she said today i'm reading from saint mark's gospel and read another chapter that's my kind of girl brother hear me this is what i'm trying to tell you this is why i'm glad to see you young folks thank god young folks are in church tonight i'm glad to see that amen i'm in your corner young folks i want you to know this listen let me thrill you you know what this girl did finally the school authorities came to her and said now listen you got to stop this she said i'm gonna do it every day they said will you compromise with us let us give you a room and you can read the bible for all afternoon if you want to have your own class she said will you announce it to the students and the first day she had 700 and some students to her class you know who they were the drug addicts they come to find out what she was taking she's not defying the school she's not defying that teacher she's not defying the police chief she's defying the highest court in the land the supreme court of the united states of america and they wanted to find out she was what she was on because they wanted to get some of it and she said oh you're right i am high and she says what i got you can have for nothing and you'll be on an eternal high and you'll never come down she said i'm hooked on jesus and i'm full of the holy ghost guess what happened a revival broke out in that school i said a revival broke out in that school because of one 16 year old girl i'm glad you came here tonight because God's going to use you to bring deliverance to other young people. They are looking for something they can be committed to. And Jesus wants all of you. Thanks for being here. Raise your right hand, will you? I want to pray for you. Audience, raise both hands out this way towards these young folks that are around this, around this altar. Satan, I'm serving notice on you. You can't have a one of them. They belong to Jesus tonight. I command you, loose them and let them go free. Everybody under this tent, I want you to repeat this after me. I'm going to put some words in your mouth. Say, Father, Father in Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, come to you tonight, I come to you tonight. I come as a sinner. I, come as a sinner. I confess my sin. I repent of my sin. I turn my back on sin. I made up my mind.
mine. I'm going to serve the Lord and make heaven my home. I'm through with the world. I'm through with the flesh. days of my life. Amen. And amen. Raise both hands and thank him now. Thank you, Jesus. If you have made a decision to trust Jesus as your Savior, Brother Shambach would like to send you a free copy of his book, Power for Victorious Christian Living. Brother Shambach wrote this book especially for new Christians to help encourage you in your new life in Christ. If you would like a copy of this faith-building book, write today to R. W. Shambach, Tyler, Texas, 75711. That's R. W. Shambach, Tyler, Texas, 75711. Or you may call 1-214-894-6141 at any time, 24 hours a day. Whether you call or write, it's important to mention that you are watching program number 004. As we go back to the service, prepare your heart as Brother Shambach prays the prayer of faith for you. I want everybody to remain where you are. I want my wife to come with me. Will you raise your right hands toward me? I want to pray for my television audience, if you will. Everyone that's watching. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stretch our hands out in the direction of everyone that's viewing this telecast. Those that know you not. Jesus, I believe you brought them to the bleeding side of Calvary. Let them know, let them come to know Jesus Christ, whom to know right is life eternal. Those that are sick and diseased and afflicted, Satan, I command you to take your hands off of every one of them. Loose them and let them go. In the name of Jesus, be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips, and by faith, I call it done. And everybody 